Welcome everyone to this weekly Sidereal Astrology Forecast. So this is for March 6th to the 12th of 2017. So uh, first we're going to look at this collectively for everyone and then we'll get into the uh, individual uh, signs after this um, collective reading. So first things first, let's look at the fact that we are coming into this week in the first quarter phase. Um, which does mean a uh, time of the lunar cycle about challenging ourselves. All right? It's a challenging time. It's when the sun and moon are in a square. And uh, that's what we want to do. We want to really set uh, things in motion and uh, set some intentions and, and uh, take some action steps towards whatever it is that we gained last week, the previous week, um, to this one. Uh, earlier last week, we did have a solar eclipse. And so that was a time of new beginnings and uh, clearing away some things for us to start something new in our life. So uh, great this week to continue with those new things, to challenge yourself uh, to take those steps there. Now at the week's end, we do have a full moon. So as we go through the week, there will be more and more support and more and more ease and even awareness. In fact, um, right around the weekend on Sunday, uh, when we have this full moon, there is uh, lots of awareness with this, and it's going to be right on the cusp between Leo and Virgo, uh, which does emphasize the awareness of, first of all, our passions, what it is that we're excited about in life, what sparks that inner flame, and then second of all, what takes work, what takes pragmatism, what takes working on the details of things and cultivating those qualities of ourself. So these two signs are obviously very different from each other but they're the uh, sort of middle ground between when we take our passions and then we actually implement them. We practice them, we refine them, we get better at them, we turn them into something. You know, it's a lot like the painter who gets the inspiration to paint in Leo and then Virgo of taking that inspiration and actually doing the work, right? So it's that kind of energy, but collectively it's about implementing both the passion and the willingness to do the work and uh, improve things in our life. So uh, that's going to be at the end of the week, full moon, Sunday, in between those two. So again, as we go through the week, more awareness, more momentum, and again, an excellent week for cultivating those new beginnings from last. So coming into this week, we do have, um, we do have Mercury conjoining up to the sun here Monday and Tuesday. And uh, this is in Aquarius. So we are actually finishing up a lot of the Aquarius energy um, this week, Mercury is going to go into Pisces. The sun's going to go into Pisces um, Friday and Saturday. So we're really getting into more of the watery energy um, this week. And that's already been the case because we've had Venus and Mars uh, in Pisces. But now we got Mercury and the sun joining up with them um, throughout the week. But coming into this week with Aquarius, uh, the first couple days, really good for mental things. Uh, we could be feeling quite active, in fact mentally, sometimes a bit too much, and it can create a bit of nervousness or uh, real busyness. Sometimes our routine can be very busy. And so it is good to find healthy ways of channeling what can be a very strong, energetic, mental energy, which I do recommend things like writing things down, practical stuff, um, whether it's planning or journaling, things like that to really help it stay nice and grounded. But through that, we can be gaining a lot of insights. In fact, and we'll see which area this is uh, bringing insight for you personally once we get into the signs. But yeah, very good for channeling all of that mental energy in a way that's grounded, constructive. Maybe it's through speaking or talking with someone. You know, sometimes through speaking and just speaking things out loud or talking to someone helps us formulate these ideas, and helps us stay nice and grounded with that as well. Then as we get into Tuesday and Thursday, speaking of um, that conjunction, both planets will be sextiling up to Pluto. So we do have a bit of um, depth, openness for depth, openness for change, uh, feeling maybe quite powerful, you know, to make change. Now, this isn't a strong aspect. Again, sextiles are minor aspects, uh, but there is an opening for that, an opening for change, an, open, an openness to go deep and to see where we can see the truth of things and uh, make the changes that we otherwise wouldn't because when Pluto isn't forming an aspect or Pluto is forming a harsh aspect, we can be avoiding change or just not even seeing it, mostly because of like Pluto showing us where we have the fears. 
Uh, so we're willing to face the fears here this week. We're willing to make the changes. At least there's just a door opening for that. And of course, we can choose or choose not to walk through that door. But that can be, you know, there can be some positive changes here midweek with all of this. And anything that, again, does uh, involve taking action steps or implementing some ideas that maybe you had last week or earlier this week with this conjunction uh, can be an excellent time for that. Then um, as we get into Thursday, that's when Mercury starts to go into Pisces. Again, Mercury, our minds, um, going into a very watery part of the chart. This is all about the ocean, diving deep with our intuition, getting into the receptive side of things, and going within for the answers. You know, Mercury, again, is all about wanting things to be understood on a practical level, but Pisces is very different from that. Pisces is saying, we don't always have everything figured out. We don't know exactly where things are going and, and there's so much that's outside of our control. And so the more open we are to surrendering to that mentally, in other words, the more we let go and surrender the thoughts, the thinking patterns, and even again, that routine in terms of wanting things to be structured in, in the immediate environment, as we surrender and let go, uh, we are finding the flow. And that's exactly what Mercury will be showing us in Pisces here for, um, for quite some time, for the next couple months off and on. And so I think, well, with the sun and, and Mercury, that is. Um, so I think with all that Pisces energy right now, just starting to get in, uh, acclimated to the importance of listening to the intuition, the inner guidance when it comes to wanting to find out something or wanting some knowledge or insight. And um, of course, things like meditation and rest, R&R, &R, um, yoga, spiritual activities can help us achieve such a state. So that's going to be a Thursday shift there. Um, then uh, Friday and Saturday, Mercury will be going over Chiron. So we could be maybe feeling wounded about some of this, maybe feeling wounded about um, our ability to figure things out or our intelligence or our practical ability or our routine, perhaps. You know, feeling wounded with that. So Chiron's all about acceptance. And as we accept whatever wounds do come up involving this practical stuff Friday and Saturday, I think it can be refreshing and rejuvenating and help us let go and surrender. And that's essentially what Chiron has been showing us in Pisces is how we can let go and surrender. Um, again, everything outside of our control there. And so that can be refreshing and healing Friday, Saturday. So at that same time, as we go into the weekend, the sun is going to be shifting into Pisces at that time. So this is our vital life force collectively. This is our focus collectively. And so now going into the depth of the ocean, again, intuition, receptivity, listening to inner guidance. But here is where our outer reality starts to become very nebulous, very watery, cloudy, if we're trying to, again, project or figure things out. So with all this Pisces stuff, it's very important, like I was saying with Mercury, to surrender. It's in the ocean, right? From the ocean, it's good to float. It's good to see where the current's taking us and allow the current to take us there. And it doesn't mean we can't take action. We certainly can. Uh, but in the direction of where the flow is, right? Versus trying to swim against the current, which just wears us out. So, uh, yeah. And then again, very good for anything that does require spiritual activities, and um, rest and that intuitive approach, collectively speaking. Now, Sunday with that full moon, which again, even though there's all this watery stuff, there is more momentum as we go through the week. There is more awareness and the full moon can certainly be giving us awareness about what we're passionate about in life and then what we can do to take the work, uh, take the, you know, the practical steps towards achieving those passions. Um, and we'll see which houses these are for you personally. But also on Sunday, Mercury then does square up to Saturn. In fact, this full moon will be forming a T-square with Saturn. So over the weekend in particular, I think you, we may be feeling a bit restricted or a bit blocked on some level. And we'll look at this more in the daily when we do the full moon report. But some, something here blocked with the mind, with the practical, feeling restricted. And so as I always say with Saturn, and in the square, it is about taking the steps towards achieving a bit of patience, towards you know wanting patience, wanting discipline, wanting to take things slow, 
and to perhaps put some things on the back burner if it may need to be the case with what we're thinking about or with the routine or with whatever this awareness is with the full moon. I think the more willing we are to take that responsible approach, although it might be challenging because we may not want to be restricted or blocked. We may not want to be patient, but as we are willing to do that, then we're working on the side of Saturn of taking the action steps towards seeing the big picture, all right, and taking things nice and slow. All right, and of course with Saturn, things do come in time and knowing that yes, things are being built with this awareness, but they may be just taking some time. All right, so let's go and look at this now specifically for each of the signs so you can see what's going on for you, which houses these are involved with. Again, I do recommend watching this for your sun, moon, and ascendant sign to get the holistic picture. The sun will be your outer focus of your reality. The moon is your inner reality. Um, in terms of the predictions, what's going on inwardly. And then the ascendance is just generally the life path and how things are unfolding for that life journey. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this in more detail. Oh, and by the way, yeah, you can click the links down in the comment section. In the comment section, there's timestamps next to each of the signs. All right, so Aries, let's have a look at your week, your horoscope for this week. So again, as a recap, your ruler is still in Pisces in the 12th house. Got a lot of energy in the 12th house. Now you got Mercury and the sun to go in there. Um, Mercury will go in there Thursday, the sun Friday and Saturday. Uh, but it's already been a watery time for you. Um, at least it's been an important time for you to maybe get some R&R, &R, meditation, learn more about yourself spiritually. And some of you, uh, maybe more, uh, what would you say, psychologically, you could say, maybe doing some healing of some traumas or some wounds and um, fears and things like this, understanding more about yourself psychologically so you can accept these aspects of yourself and of life, which then does, of course, lead to peace and true inner happiness. So you've actually, like I said, gone through this for quite some time. Your ruler is at the end of Pisces. And we'll be going into Aries next week. Um, and a lot of you, maybe on Sunday, might start to feel that shift. So it's the last of it. Um, once Mars goes into your first house next week, I think it'll be certainly more active for a lot of you and more independent and more clear if it has been a bit of a muddled time for you. Now, Monday through Tuesday, uh, the Sun and Mercury do conjoin. Uh, uh, beginning the week here and then sextile up to Pluto uh, midweek. So this is again the confirmation that it has been uh, coming into this week even too. A great time to be focused on your aspirations or some of you may be connecting with your friends or network circles. So there could be some new insights about that. Maybe future things. Maybe you're excited about it with the conjunction with Mercury and the Sun. Um, anything you find that you idealize in life, whether it's for yourself or maybe again, group stuff and connecting to things and uh, situations that are larger than yourself can be very inspiring. So good insight for future things, aspirations, network circles, and even making some changes, in fact, with some of those areas. Because uh, with the sextile up to Pluto, Pluto has been helping a lot of you restructure your whole life path, your whole life direction. And there could be an opening to where you are willing to maybe make some changes with your future life path or those group activities, network things that you might be involved with or focused on. And it's just an opening for that, but it's certainly an opportunity and it could be powerful and it could make some positive changes in your life if you choose to do that. Again, sextiles are about the choice there. 
All right, so it's not a major thing, but just a minor and um, maybe just another step in the right direction of maybe facing some fears or making some changes so you can cultivate those aspirations. All right, so like I said, Thursday, Mercury goes into your 12th. This is where you could be learning a lot through your dreams if you aren't already. Dream journaling can be good because, again, Mercury is about writing and practical stuff. So anything you can do to combine the two. Journaling is great. Automatic writing is fantastic. Um, yoga and any routine that does involve you connecting to more of the spiritual dimensions is great also. You know, Mercury is about routine. So that can be certainly um, an excellent uh, way of working with this. Then Friday and Saturday, Mercury does go over Chiron. So you could be learning about some of these wounds that maybe you're healing about yourself spiritually and psychologically, as I was saying. Uh, but you could be learning more practical stuff about that, certainly possible, or about yourself. And um, yeah, you could be feeling perhaps wounded about the mind or something like that or your routine. But again, the acceptance is the key. Especially that because that's what Pisces is all about. That's what Chiron's all about. It really is an accepting time. And as you're doing that, like I was saying, you're rejuvenating, you're refreshing, you know, yourself, you're constantly transforming. And Friday and Saturday, you could certainly uh, be aware of that. Then that's the same time the sun goes in there, putting even more emphasis on it. Again, R&R, &R, rest. The sun is our vital life force. So that's why it's so important when the sun goes into the 12th to do the rest. So that, again, when the sun goes into your first as Mars will next week, uh, but when the sun does, um, in about a month and a half, you'll have done this rest. Not that you haven't already, but um, you know, you'll know you have done the rest and reset yourself, and then you'll have the energy and wherewithal to continue with your goals and whatever else is on a more outward sense. But for those of you that are spiritually in inclined, you know this is an excellent time for all types of spiritual activities. All right, and then uh, the week does end with that full moon um, and that Mercury square up to Saturn and the T-square with the full moon. So like I was saying, there might be a bit of uh, restriction or block perhaps on Sunday, uh, maybe about some of these things I just talked about. But remember seeing the big picture, Saturn has been helping you build things in life that truly matter in life. So um, remembering that, that everything you've been building this past year and a half and will be for about the next year, is um, helping you connect to what matters most. And so still building that, maybe being patient with some of these things. Um, if it's more external, some of you being patient with shared resources or intimacy or openness, that stuff you've been, whatever it is you've been working on this past year and a half, just being patient can be very constructive. Now the full moon does illuminate two key areas for you. It's your fourth house and your fifth. So um, there can be a lot of awareness about the importance of or excuse me, not your fourth and fifth, your fifth and your sixth, fifth and sixth. So there can be a lot of awareness about your self-expression, like I was saying in the collective for you very personally, what, you, what you're passionate about, what excites you, what you like to do to have fun and connect to those, um, those things that spark your inner flame. And so it could be a creative awareness. It's already been that way because the last full moon was here as well, but more creative awareness about your passions, but then also too, so maybe some things culminating, not only about that uh, creative energy, also your work for, for a lot of you, in fact. And so if there's been anything over the past six months that you have been involved with, with your routine or your work, anything on a day-to-day -day basis, um, it could be a high point with that and a culmination of that from the past six months. But at the very least, an awareness of this area and through this insight, about your daily routine and whatnot, you can then move forward going into next week to cultivate that stuff even more. All right. So Aries, have a fantastic week. Thank you again for all of your likes, comments, and shares. If you would like a personal reading, be sure to get in touch for that. There's a link down in the comment section. And uh, yeah, hope you guys have a fantastic one. Take care. And I'll talk to you next time.
Taurus, let's have a look at your weekly horoscope. So first things first, your ruler has been in Pisces. Uh, she's now retrograde as she went last week. So on a larger context, a lot of you are rethinking maybe some of those aspirations that you've been cultivating, uh, maybe reconsidering some things involving your friendships or your network circles or organizations you're a part of. So continuing to do that this week in a larger sense, I think is still great. Um, you'll be learning a lot about what uh, your what it, what it aspires you, right? What you want to cultivate for the future. And then also a lot about um, the importance of community and friends and networks and all that kind of stuff or anything on that group level that you could be sort of just taking a pause with or reworking um, at this time. Now, uh, within that context, we do have um, a lot of energy going into this 11th house for you. Uh, we got Mercury going in here on Thursday and then the sun on Friday and Saturday. So as the week unfolds, more and more of this. And essentially what this emphasizes is that over the next roughly month and a half, um, um, and even I think a bit longer, but around, around the next you know, month and a half to two months, you can have a lot of emphasis here in your 11th. So anything that does involve your aspirations, future things, your hopes and wishes, and again, networks uh, is fantastic. And I think you'll, you'll notice more energy going into this area, more insight with Mercury, be getting more practical with this stuff, learning about it. And then the sun comes in here, you're getting the vital life force with it, uh, you know, through this weekend and onward. And that focus um, can help you um, sort of set some new beginnings with it. Cause in about two weeks, you're gonna have a new moon in this area. And so this is all laying the framework and the foundation uh, for those new beginnings with the 11th house. Now coming into this week, Monday through Tuesday, we do have that conjunction with Mercury and the sun, and this will be in your 10th house. So a lot of you um, still, you know, this first half of the week, especially still a lot of attention and focus on your career. And so coming into the week, I think it's great for that. It can be a lot of energy with this. It is good to bring again extra attention through getting things practically, you know, grounded, whether it's written down or make a plan or something like that to help this strong insight or mental energy be grounded. But through that process, I think a lot of you will be gaining some insights about your career, your productive stuff. If it's not career, maybe it's anything in your life that you do consider uh, something you want to achieve or something that you do want to strive for for your success. All right, it's all 10th house stuff. Then Tuesday through Thursday, this middle part of the week, that conjunction will be sextiling up to Pluto, which does suggest there might be some opportunity uh, this week for the career, for the productive stuff. Um, it's just an opening for that, but it could certainly be, be facilitating that. It's also an opening for um, anything that involves your finances or your values, your resources, and um, your self-expression. So it's an opening to express yourself, an opening to cultivate your values. And, um, you know, it could be powerful. It could be that you're facing some fears or making some changes here uh, to facilitate those areas. All right, so that's uh, pretty much the middle of the week. And then, like I said, Thursday, Mercury does go into the 11th, giving you more mental aptitude when it comes to um, those aspirations. There might be some wounds that you are healing with all of this as you have been. Um, Chiron's been in your 11th house. If you do feel wounded about any of this stuff that we're talking about, um, know that it's all subjective. It's internal. It doesn't reflect the actual reality of things. So maybe doing some healing with this, accepting some things about yourself or about the situation uh, could be refreshing Friday and Saturday. And that's the same time the sun goes in there giving you more of a focus on these aspirations. And by the way, the 11th house is also the value you do derive from your career. So a lot of you are uh, maybe focused on that, maybe the finances from your work or the value of enjoying your work and cultivating things on that level, which again, has already been emphasized because you've had so many planets here. All right, and then the week does end with that full moon, which will be right on the cusp between your fourth and your fifth house. And so maybe some insights and culminations about your home, family, or health, which can be excellent, um, which again, you had um, about a month ago when we had the full, that uh, lunar eclipse in Leo, a lot of you already gained a lot of energy about these uh, personal things in life or your health. And so more awareness about that and also about your self-expression. And that's gonna be the, the Virgo side to it. 
um, what you're passionate about, your interests, the things that spark that inner flame. So with whatever that awareness is this weekend, you can certainly be cultivating that as you go into next. Now know, you know, this whole, uh, this whole full moon and even Mercury on Sunday will be squaring up to Saturn. So there is this maybe feeling restricted or things aren't going a certain way or something like that. Or it's just taking time usually with Saturn squares. We realize it's just taking time or something like that. So the more willing you are to take the slow and steady approach to the health, home or family stuff um, and to that self-expression and interests of yours um, and passions of yours, um, then that's a great way of working with it. Saturn helps us, even though it might, we might be feeling limited with it, Saturn helps us take the slow, steady and responsible approach to all this. And, and this has essentially been the hard work that you've been putting in probably with relationships, maybe just over the past year and a half, taking a more serious, long-term grounded approach to those. And so again, seeing where you can take a responsible approach to all of your one-to-one -one connections and the whole relationship sphere might be the um, key into this uh, patience with the bigger picture stuff here. All right. So Taurus, hope you guys have a fantastic week. Thank you again for all of your likes, comments, and shares of these videos. If you would like a personal reading, be sure to get in touch. There's a link down in the comment section for that. But um, yeah, hope you guys have a fantastic one and I will see you next time. Take care. Gemini's, let's have a look at your weekly horoscope here. So your ruler Mercury is forming a lot of aspects this week, very active, uh, which is really nothing out of the ordinary. He's a very fast moving planet. Um, but uh, I would say the most significant thing being on Thursday when he goes into your 10th house of career. So there's already been a lot of likely uh, learning about maybe your life path or uh, where you can have a bit of adventure in your life. Maybe some of you have been studying things like uh, philosophy or spirituality or other types of higher learning uh, but whatever's been opening your mind and your horizons uh, now there's a shift on Thursday going into the career stuff and mind you this has already been a very active area for you because you've had Venus here and Mars here helping motivate you and connect to your career and stuff but now your ruler shifts here so uh, for there's gonna be a lot of energy still in your tenth over about the next uh, month and a half and so uh, there's still a lot to learn. Um, there's, especially once your ruler gets in here, there will be a lot to learn about your career. There's a lot to do. Um, you know, it's like your first house ruler, so it could be very active for you in this area. And then once the sun goes in there Friday and Saturday, that's where your focus is primarily gonna be. And again, it might already be that way for you, but it's gonna emphasize that even more. And then in about two weeks from now, two to three weeks, depending on when you're watching this, uh, no, yeah, yeah, two to three weeks. Uh, there's going to be a new moon in your 10th. And so there's going to be new beginnings that are around the corner having to do with your productive life. Some of you, if it isn't career specifically, it's anything that you do want to strive for in your life that's relating to your achievement or your success. And basically what you, where your mind is shifting and where you're shifting this week into focusing on this area, this is all laying the foundation and the framework for what will be those new beginnings um, down the road there. All right, so let's look at this. Uh, coming into this week, uh, your ruler is gonna be conjunct the sun. So your ruler is engulfed by the sun in the sky, which means there can be a lot of passion, a lot of energy, a lot of mental energy or insights. And so it's good to ground all of this, anything that you do like to do that does involve writing or journaling, things like that. Um, and again, a lot of this might be about the adventurous stuff or the possibilities or the learning that you're doing on a higher level. So uh, great for reading books, great for writing, maybe sharing your philosophy, sharing your worldview, you know, verbally with someone or just talking about it um, can help you uh, sort of ground what can be a very energetic and sometimes very uncomfortable energy because again, it's engulfed, it's the sun, it's, it's very strong. 
And so it could be nervous, it can be busy, it can be a little bit too much to handle. So again, anything that is about practically writing it down, whether it's a, a plan or something like that, or ideas, or communication, you know, that kind of stuff can help balance out this energy. So that's Monday, Tuesday. Then as we go through Tuesday through Thursday, the middle part of the week, that conjunction does sextile up to Pluto. So it's an excellent week for you to make some changes. There's, it's not forcing you to do it, and there's nothing necessarily pushing you to do it either. But um, there might just be an opening. A lot of you might be feeling like making some changes with, uh, with those possibilities, with that adventurous spirit or open-mindedness. Some of you too with relationships. You know, Pluto's been in your seventh house. Some of you, furthermore, with your health or relationships with your family. Um, in fact, so it's not major, but whatever opportunities do present themselves to where you may feel like you are willing to face some fears to make some changes in your life, probably most fundamentally just having to do with yourself and your goals and things um, is an excellent uh, week for that. And through that, yes, you could see some positive changes on a minor, but also part of a much larger sense here. So, yeah, Thursdays when Mercury goes into the 10th and putting the emphasis on the career and um, again, it's in Pisces, so it's about particularly the fact that in your chart, it's always important for all of you to be doing something in your career that you are, that you do connect to on a soul level, right? That you're spiritually connected to there. Um, and then Friday and Saturday, Mercury does conjoin up to Chiron. So there might be some healing maybe with your sense of whether you can cultivate your achievement and success in life. And you've kind of already been doing this healing. If you've been feeling wounds regarding this for the past, I think it's been um, six months-ish with Chiron here. But uh, you could be feeling wounded, particularly Friday and Saturday, because it is your ruler. So it's not a harsh aspect, it's a neutral one. So the more willing you are to accept any wounds that do come up, make some transformations and changes that you might feel like are going to you know, make those changes you want to see, but it might require facing some fears or inadequacies to do that. Then it can be very refreshing, very rejuvenating. In fact, going into the weekend, um, you could be feeling quite refreshed in that fashion. And that's the same time the sun does shift into that 10th, giving you more focus there on the career going into, again, the next roughly month and a half with the 10th. Now, uh, Mercury, your ruler again on Sunday will be squaring up to Saturn. So here's where the harsh aspect is. All in all, your ruler is well placed, um, cons you know, considering Pisces, if you are willing to kind of detach and let go uh, this week. But uh, Mercury squaring Saturn on Sunday does make us feel quite restricted uh, when it's a ruler like this or quite blocked. Um, so again, as patient as you can, just, I guess, seeing that things are taking time, Maybe it's with the career, maybe it's with your goals, uh, maybe it's with your routine. A lot of you have been putting a lot of hard work into your routine, actually, um, over this past roughly year and a half. And um, it's still great to be doing that, whether it's your work or your diet or whatever it is. Uh, a lot of good constructive energy, but maybe there's just something that is requiring a bit of patience or hard work just Sunday around this time uh, on a day-to-day -day sense to where you can integrate and cultivate that uh, responsible approach there. All right, and then Sunday is the full moon, so there is awareness that's involving two key areas for you, your third house and your fourth. So on one, these are both the mental and emotional sides to life. So on one hand, a lot of you are gaining some insights now about um, your ideas and the importance of having practical things in your life. Or if you've been involved in the past six months with anything that does involve reading, writing, learning, or trading, or business, things like this, could be high points and there could be some more awareness about that as you've already had this past month because uh, we had the last full moon here as well the lunar eclipse now the other area is emotional this is more about your home your family or your health and uh, a lot of this is being reworked right now because you got jupiter retrograde in the fourth so a lot of you are reconsidering the health of the, or um, your home stuff or family stuff or past and so with all that reconsideration, you're now gaining some insight about it. So with whatever those insights are on Sunday, or even things that maybe over the past six months you've been working on involving these roots in your life, uh, they're coming to a high point, you're gaining some awareness, and with whatever that awareness is, you can certainly continue to cultivate that as we go into next week.
All right. So Gemini's have a fantastic week. Thank you again for all of your likes, comments, and shares. If you would like a personal reading, be sure to get in touch for that. There's a link down in the comment section. But yeah, hope you guys have a fantastic one. And I will see you all next time. Take care. Cancers, let's have a look at your weekly horoscope here. So the first thing is that, um, you know, your ruler of the moon is coming up to a full moon on Sunday. So you'll likely find that maybe coming into this week, it's a bit challenging or you're challenging yourself or something like that or feeling a bit restricted or something. That's the uh, first quarter phase of the lunar cycle. But uh, right away, I would say by like Tuesday, Wednesday, as you go through the week, there's uh, slowly but surely more momentum and support that you are feeling and more awareness in fact too because as you approach that full moon you got all that solar energy bouncing off your ruler the moon that is um, helping you gain more insight and energy and that kind of stuff too so the full moon on sunday will be uh, right in between your second and your third house which does emphasize this now culmination of uh, maybe what you have been involved with the past six months involving your finances for some of you or your resources and um, this has already been the case because the last full moon we had was a lunar eclipse in this area so now more awareness about this which is great so any insights you do gain about your resources and this is also your inner resources most fundamentally you know your sense of self-worth your self-reliance your natural gifts and abilities all of this is coming to the forefront for you to now cultivate and implement going into next week. The other area is your third house. If you've been involved with anything involving reading or writing or learning or business or trade um, over the past six months, this um, is also coming to a high point as well. And at the very least, all of you perhaps learning more or just being more aware of this uh, weekend about how your mind works about your, um, the way you communicate and um, exchange and all this and just your, your whole view of willing to treat life as a learning process. You know, this whole perspective of that life is a place of learning and all this and, and going into it with that willingness. All of this mental energy is coming to the awareness for you to then cultivate, again, going into next week as well. Implementing the importance of communication also. Now, um, that's the uh, lunar cycle. That's the most important thing involving your ruler of the moon. But um, coming into this week, we do have the sun conjoining up to, to Mercury. That's going to still be in your eighth house. Now, there's been a lot of energy in your eighth, which is the house of healing, of transformation, of depending on others, uh, you know, understanding more about the fact that life is a very interdependent world, that we all rely on each other and all of this. Um, so, but most fundamentally, it's about openness and vulnerability with life. So it's been very deep and a lot of you have transformed. In fact, there is a lot of transformation this week because you got Mercury going into your ninth house. This is the transformation part of the chart. When planets go over it, there's a, there's a shift and uh, Mercury goes over here. So your mind transforms on Thursday where you start to see things from a bigger picture, a philosophical, larger than life picture. It's like the butterfly after the cocoon and then the sun on friday and saturday okay so as we approach the weekend then the sun goes into the ninth and that'll be the last of the fast moving planets leaving this very deep area 
and going into the more expansive area. Now, mind you, you've already had a lot of energy in the expansive side of things. You've had Venus and Mars here. And so, you know, you've likely already been maybe seeing the big picture. Some of you accessing your adventurous side. Some of you doing things like reading philosophy or writing uh, philosophy or, or higher learning and all this, anything that expands your horizons. So more fuel to that. And I think you'll find this to be motivating. There'll be insights with this. And in about two to three weeks, depending on when you're watching this, uh, there is going to be a new moon in that ninth house. Again, further cultivating this new area of uh, expansion for you, of uh, opening your horizons either literally, like physically, like through adventure, or hikes, or, or travel, things like that. Um, some of you mentally, through the learning I was talking about, or emotionally, or whatever it might be there. All right, so um, so that's the shifts. But like I was saying, starting the week, there is a conjunction in your eighth with Mercury and the Sun. So um, there might be some insight about all of this transformation, all this deeper stuff. Maybe it's the last transformation you're doing here. Uh, but it can be passion. It can be a lot of you know energy behind maybe wanting to connect to life on a deeper level really get to the bottom of things it can be really good for research psychology spirituality and as a result uh that conjunction then sextiles up to pluto which does suggest you do have this open for op opening for change here and a willingness to face some fears and all this and to make those changes with that area and then like i said as a result probably feeling transformed as we go through the rest of the week. So it's just an opening with the sex dial, but um, I think it's great if you are guided to, to get into the deeper dimensions of life or the interdependent side of life. Maybe it's about relationships for some of you, openness and vulnerability, but fundamentally openness and vulnerability with life. And then naturally it'll take place in other areas. All right. Um, there might even be an opening to make some changes with the, again, resources, the finances, possibly for some of you an opportunity with that stuff and maybe getting a bit of more of a receptive approach to life as well as a more, again, openness to treat life as a learning process. Mercury does rule your 12th and your third. All right, so um, yeah, that's Tuesday through Thursday with that opening there and then the transformation, like I was saying, Thursday, Mercury goes into the ninth, then does go over Chiron Friday and Saturday um, so a lot of you have been feeling or, or healing some wounds, perhaps, regarding your adventure side or your open-minded side. And this is all very natural. Chiron is just showing you where there's internal wounds. They're not a reflection of your outer reality. So as you do that healing, maybe Friday and Saturday, um, you can feel rejuvenated, refreshed with this area. And um, yeah, maybe even with your mind, too, if you're feeling any wounds about, you know, the way you're thinking about things or your perspective of life, your worldview. Uh, or what's possible um, as you accept any wounds that do come up, you'll find this can be a very rejuvenating um, weekend. All right, and then Sunday, like I said, is the high point for all of us, but especially for you involving your ruler of the moon. We have a full moon in your second house, helping you gain more and more awareness about your resources, inner and outer, as well as the importance of learning and communication. And uh, there is gonna be a square with Saturn with this and with Mercury on Sunday. So just remember to take things nice and slow, nice and patiently. You know, you've had Saturn in your fifth house that's been helping you take your self-expression seriously, your passion seriously, and build these things for the long term. And so just remembering that, I, I suppose this weekend of how things do take time with passion and the things we build in life and maybe with some of those other areas, the resources or the communication and things, maybe with these possibilities this open-mindedness, that takes time. So all in all, on Sunday with the full moon, just a bit of reserve and responsibility can go a long ways. All right, so Cancers, have a fantastic week. I wanna thank you all very much for all of your likes, comments, and shares of this video. Um, and if you would like a personal reading, be sure to get in touch. There's a link down in the comment section. And uh, yeah, have a great one, and I'll see you all next time. Take care.
Leos, welcome to your weekly horoscope here. So let's first look at uh, your ruler, the sun, who is going to be shifting signs this week. And also the fact that we do have a full moon at the end of the week in your sign and Virgo. Uh, but first with the sun, you've already been focused, I think, quite a bit on the whole relationship dynamic of life, uh, one to one connections uh, over the past three weeks with your ruler here. So up and through Friday and Saturday, which is when he does shift into the eighth. So up until that time, I think it's still great for continuing to focus on uh, relating with others or having more balance in your life with relationships. Um, some of you with harmony, cooperation, equality, uh, maybe matters of doing the right thing, of justice, of morality, all of this stuff about bringing more balance back to your life in general um, and relating with others. Um, is a great uh, source of energy still for you. Now, Friday and Saturday, the shift is going to be in your eighth house, which is the house of everything deeper. And first off, in the context of relationships, this is where we do get into um, the deeper side of relationships, such as openness and vulnerability. Now, it's already been that way because you've had both Venus, which is the planet of relationships, but also Mars um, in the eighth house. So it's already been a very deep time where I think a lot of you have been understanding more about um, openness and vulnerability with yourself and naturally that's been coming through your relationships uh, but that's essentially what the eighth house is about now with your ruler going in here uh, for the next uh, roughly month and a half there will be a lot of emphasis on where you can um, again see what matters most in life and connect to what matters most and you're gonna have a new moon here in about two or three weeks depending on when you're watching this so there is going to be some new beginnings shaping up about openness, vulnerability with life, and then how that energy can come through all the different areas, whether it's relationships, your career, your family, whatever it might be for you personally. And likely it's just generally all areas. So that's the shift. And um, coming into this week, Monday through Tuesday, we do have a nice conjunction with Mercury and the sun in your seventh, uh, which can give you a lot of uh, communication or insights or mental energy to uh, connect with others or someone in your life um, or again to where you can have a bit of balance in your life so whatever that's about usually relationship related um, there can be a lot of energy with this some insights maybe a lot of you just learning more about what relationships mean to you personally um, things like that and writing it down journaling all of this more grounded stuff can help you formulate these ideas or maybe just communicating with someone about a relationship or about relationships in your life can help you formulate those ideas as well. Now, Tuesday through Thursday, that conjunction then will sextile up to Pluto, which does mean that there is an openness for change here also. It's not major, but there's just an openness. So if there's anything you have been feeling like you do want to make some changes with in the whole, your personal perspective on relationships, in other words, where you can face some fears perhaps with Pluto, uh, fears of maybe self-expression, which has been Pluto in your fifth house, or fifth house things. And so it's not harsh, it's easy, but we're willing to face the fears, we're willing to make those changes. And um, yeah, and so through that, there can be some positive things as a result um, in the larger picture with balance and moderation, of course. Now, uh, Thursday, we do have Mercury, uh, who will be the first one to shift into your eighth house. So your mind, although has been on, again, people or relationships, now going into the eighth, your mind's going to go into the deeper dimensions here. And so you'll likely find this an excellent time for research, excellent time for learning about and uh, developing things like psychology or spirituality that, again, require you to understand more about the deeper hidden dimensions of your life or of you or, you know, whatever it might be of the world even. Uh, so diving deep and your mind can certainly do this and you'll certainly have that ability to do so Friday and Saturday Mercury does go over Chiron suggesting that you've already been healing some wounds about some of this You know about your openness and vulnerability. I think it's been about six months with Chiron in your eighth so it's already been there, but now it's emphasizing it and um, You know uh, Friday and Saturday in particular if you do feel any wounds about this personally um, knowing that you're very good here in this area, it's just subjective with Chiron, know you're very good here, accept those wounds, and as a result, you can actually feel quite rejuvenated and transformed, as we often do with the eighth. You know, the eighth is all about breaking the chains, 
breaking the chains of all those fears and inhibitions and patterns that hold us back in life. And with all this emphasis in your eighth, this is essentially what you're doing is you're breaking those chains and, and transforming. And with Mercury, it's helping you understand more about it now. Getting into, again, the deep diving with the mind it can help you understand more about uh, those fears and whatnot. And then to make the change there to free yourself up uh, with these things. Now, Friday and Saturday, that's when the sun goes in there. Again, that's the major shift for you because it is your ruler going into the weekend. And then Sunday, we do have another full moon in your sign, right in, the, right in between Leo and Virgo. So you already had one of these um, about, uh, about a month ago, depending on when you're watching this. But um, the last uh, full moon we had was in your sign. So a lot of you already been gaining a lot of insight about your independence. It's been your life path to pursue your independence to cultivate your personal needs right now. And so this weekend, you could gain some insight about who you are, what you're about, what you want in life, and the importance of all this. And whatever insight you do gain about yourself or your goals and whatnot, your, your personal wants, uh, that's gonna help you then cultivate this stuff going into the next two weeks as we move forward going into next week. Now, the other area is a culmination with resources. That's your second house. So if you have been involved with anything over the past six months involving finances or resources or your self-reliance, um, this is also coming to a high point of the solar cycle. So good insight for that. And some, some of you could be seeing some culminations with that. But at the very least, with whatever comes to you during this weekend um, involving your self-reliance, you know, your sense of self-worth, knowing that you do have everything that you need to cultivate your values in life, and accessing them and cultivating them and having gratitude in your life and all this can really help you, um, again, cultivate that area for the next couple of weeks, but even the next six months as we move forward there. Uh, and, the, and we will have two full moons in this sign. So in the next month, you'll have another full moon here. And this is uh, Jupiter retrograde. So note too that all this resourceful resource stuff, internet of resources, is all going through this reflection right now. Um, so just reconsidering it, redoing it, some of you redoing your finances or things involving investments or whatever. So just kind of, you know, know that things are still being reworked and reconsidered. And I think the more willing you are to do that um, is great because then you're working with Jupiter there. All right. And then that uh, full moon will be squaring up to Saturn, as I was saying. So there is this T-square. This is the fact that a lot of you have been putting a lot of hard work with either your home, your location, your family, and a lot of your health. Um, over this past year and a half. So uh, challenging yourself there, just being patient, understanding that things do take time, especially wherever Saturn is, but it's for the long term, it is being built, but being patient with those things can certainly help. Also being patient with these goals, with this awareness, with these resourceful things, um, whatever does come to you that weekend. All right, so Leos, have a fantastic week. Thank you again for all of your likes, comments, and shares. If you would like a personal reading looking at your personal chart, uh, be sure to get in touch for that. There's a link down in the comment section as well. But uh, yeah, have a great one. Thank you again. And I will see you all next time. Take care. All right, Virgos, let's have a look at your weekly horoscope. So first things first, your ruler Mercury is forming a lot of aspects, very busy this week. Uh, but what I would say is the most important is that on Thursday, your ruler Mercury shifts into the seventh house of relationships. Now, this has already been a heavily emphasized area for you because you've had Venus and Mars here. Right now with Venus retrograde, a lot of you are maybe reconsidering some things involving people in your life or specific relationships or you know how you relate with others or whatever that is. But you're also very motivated here too, which is really good. But anyways, when the ruler comes in here, yes, there is actually more motivation to cultivate this area. 
Um, but because it's Mercury, it's particularly about doing the work, right? Which is what your sign's all about, doing the details, the work, figuring things out. So that's essentially what we've got. Uh, about the next month and a half, we'll have the sun here. Uh, the sun's going to shift into your seventh uh, Friday and Saturday, giving you a lot of vital focus and attention and energy to, uh, you know, to cultivate your relationships. But with your ruler, certainly a lot to learn, a lot to work on and um, develop when it comes to all one-to-one uh, -one connections in your life. Your mind will be here. You, know, you have some, um, again, motivations with that and understanding more about the importance of independence in relationships and your personal needs in relationships and even maybe even your relationships at work or with your career um, since Mercury does rule your 10th house as well. So, um, so yeah, that's the shift with Mercury and of course it is Pisces. So this is again the fact that relationships do have to have that what you might consider soul connection, or what you might call that soul connection or that deeper connection. That's what Pisces is all about. So it's emphasizing that, you know, receptive, intuitive, and even compassionate understanding side of your relationships, which is the theme of Pisces. All right, so, um, so that's the general look at the week. But coming into it, Monday and Tuesday, we do have your ruler conjoining the sun. And this will be in your sixth house where you've already had a lot of focus. So really up until this middle part of the week, there is a lot of focus still on your work or your routine or anything you've been focused on on a daily level. So with the conjunction on Monday and Tuesday, uh, there could be a lot of energy about this. You could be very busy perhaps with your routine. Uh, maybe your mind's very busy. There's just a lot of energy. And so it is important to, like I was saying in the general, to find constructive ways of, um, of cultivating this energy, whether it's reading, writing, or with your routine, it might be you know, uh, planning or doing the work or practical type of stuff. So that could be good though, because I think a lot of you will be getting some insight about um, not only your routine and some things relating to that, but also where you can have a bit of tranquility and acceptance um, and let go or connect to your work. And again, a more of a receptive sort of way, which has been the sun uh, who does rule your 12th house. All right, so, uh, so yeah, new shift there, new insights with the everyday stuff. And Tuesday through Thursday, that conjunction does sextile up to Pluto, which means that there is just an opening here uh, for some change. Again, it might have to do with your work or your routine. Um, and uh, this could be maybe facing some fears about uh, your home stuff or your health for some of you, facing some fears maybe with family stuff or whatever it is, or it's emotional or it's past related, but it's not challenging. I think you're willing to face those fears. And as you do that acceptance, that's directly contributed, contributing to you feeling rejuvenated and refreshed with your ruler, and then your routine feeling rejuvenated and refreshed, and maybe even your work and career as well. All right, so it's just an opening to make some changes there, and uh, it can be very positive with balance and moderation. Thursdays when Mercury goes into the seventh, again, putting more emphasis on the relationship side of things, Friday and Saturday going into the weekend, your ruler does go over Chiron, so you could be feeling wounded perhaps it's not a harsh aspect it's a neutral one but some moons may come up and i think with this you are willing to do the healing and the acceptance of those wounds and as a result you could be feeling quite refreshed um, both for yourself um, and also your relationships quite possibly because again chiron's been helping you heal your connection with your relationships and your perspective of relationships and through all that healing um, it has been transforming and rejuvenating you, and certainly Friday and Saturday could be emphasizing that. All right, and then Sunday, we do have the full moon, and this is going to be right on the cusp between Leo and your sign. Um, so you are going to have two full moons back-to-back -back, um, in your sign. This is the first one. It's a blend, so it's not totally there just yet because um, a lot of your sun, moon, and ascendant signs are somewhere in Virgo, and this is casting it for the beginning of the sign, but still generally... There is some insight about you, about your life. Generally speaking, that's what the first house is all about. It's also about, again, independence, maybe some goals, some things you want. Your personal wants really come to the forefront. So for whatever this awareness you're gaining about yourself, um, it is an excellent week next week and moving forward to implement those insights. So kind of seeing that, being aware of it, and then also to the importance of having spirituality and tranquility and a meditative approach to life. That's been your life path. 
that's where you've gained a lot of insight about a month ago during the last full moon uh, lunar eclipse but uh, yeah right on the cusp between your 12th house of spirituality of finding peace through letting go surrendering getting some of that R&R &R, and then also awareness about yourself and your goals all right and so they'll mesh there there'll be a little bit of both and so with that insight again great to continue to cultivate and remember too with all this stuff involving your personal needs and your goals and your wants it's all going through this reconsideration right now anyways you got Jupiter retrograde for the next uh, few months still so still to be you know a lot to learn and reconsider involving that also all right, and then uh, as a reminder on Sunday too, we do have the squares, so your ruler will be squaring up to Saturn. So while there's a lot of awareness during the full moon, there's also some areas that we could be feeling restricted. And so if you are feeling restricted with maybe the relationships, maybe with those personal needs of yours, um, or whatever these insights are, uh, just remembering this is part of a much larger picture. Uh, it is, has been requiring patience and persistence um, with Saturn as it always does, but maybe specifically with taking seriously things like communication uh, or being patient with that uh, maybe your uh, your um, your learning willingness to learn in life take things slow with anything that you have been working hard on involving reading or writing or learning or trade or business for some of you but all in all if you are feeling the restriction i think just taking that slow steady responsible approach can help you see the big picture know that things are developing in time all right. So Virgos, have a fantastic week. Thank you very much for all of your likes, comments, and shares. If you would like a personal reading, there's a link down in the comment section for that uh, to see exactly where all these planets are for your personal chart and for the next year. But uh, yeah, Virgo, have a great one. Thank you again, and I'll see you all next time. Libras, let's have a look at your weekly horoscope here. So first things first is your ruler, as a recap, is retrograde. Went retrograde last week. And so there's this whole reconsideration right now involving where you're putting your energy, um, involving your life and who you are and what you're about, what you want. Um, and a lot of it's about your work and your routine. Maybe your needs there and whatever it is that you have been focused on involving your work or routine or daily stuff is going through this reflection. So very good to do that still as a larger backdrop and um, maybe even reworking things in specifically in terms of how they can be improved or embedded in your life or, you know, again, the importance of that routine. So that's the big picture, but uh, this week specifically, um, coming into this week, we do have a conjunction with the Sun and Mercury. That's gonna be in the area that's already been activated for you, which is your fifth house. Um, it's still a great time, this first half of the week in particular, to be focused on your self-expression. Um, some of you, your hobbies, interests, others, your things, anything you're passionate about, create creative energies, uh, but all in all, expressing yourself. And so Monday and Tuesday, there might be a lot of energy to do that with the Mercury-Sun conjunction. And um, anything that does help you channel the self-expression into healthy, grounded, structured ways, maybe through writing or um, art or something like that, can really help you um, you know, cultivate this, uh, this insight. And I think you will be gaining a lot of insight, more insight, in fact, about what you're passionate about, what you enjoy in life and entertainment and fun and all that lighter stuff. And Tuesday through Thursday, that conjunction does sextile up to Pluto. So there is an openness to make some changes with self-expression of those passions and interests. It might involve facing some fears, maybe with the whole writing dynamic or communication dynamic or with your mind, you know, diving deep with your mind. Um, it's not going to be harsh. It's going to be easy to do that. But um, if you're willing to 
I don't know, maybe make some changes, face some fears. Um, so you can, again, cultivate that self-expression, things you enjoy in life, maybe your aspirations, maybe open your horizons a bit. Um, whatever that is, I think is great to walk through that door if you do see that opening there. All right, and then Thursday, Mercury is going to shift into your sixth house, which is um, the place everything's moving into. You've already actually had a lot of energy with the six. This is, again, the routine, the work, the day-to-day -day stuff. But now Mercury here can help you get into the practical side of all this, help you learn more about it, really get into the nitty-gritty of your work or developing your craft or your routine or whatever it is there. Now, there might be some wounds about it Friday through Saturday as Mercury does go over Chiron. So if you do feel wounded uh, regarding that routine or day-to-day -day stuff, know this is all internal. It's all subjective. Um, it's not an actual reflection of your reality. And so as you do that healing within, you can find that you do um, feel rejuvenated and refreshed and transformed, in fact. Uh, going into the weekend involving these things. And so that's about the same time Friday and Saturday when the sun shifts into the sixth. So your focus over the next month and a half will be on, um, again, these very same things. And But the sun is particularly your vital life force. So you'll find that there's more energy here with the routine, with the work, with the day-to-day -day stuff. There's going to be new beginnings, in fact, with it in about two to three weeks, depending on when you're watching this. So those new seeds... I mean, everything that you're sort of developing now is laying the foundation, is setting the, the, the sort of garden bed for those new seeds that you will be planting um, in this area here in a few weeks. All right, and then uh, we do have that full moon at the end of the week. This is going to be right in between your 11th house and your 12th house. So there is an awareness about your aspirations this weekend. Um, your future things, some of you, if you've been involved with, because it's already been your life path area, so there's already been culminations here. But continuing with anything involving future aspirations, um, involving group or your network circles, uh, groups in your life, things like this, awareness about it at the very least and how you can continue to cultivate that stuff moving forward. The other area of culmination is with your spirituality. That's going to be the Virgo side to it. Um, again, the importance of rest, relaxation. That's what Jupiter retrograde has been helping you relearn and reconsider here. The importance of expanding your spiritual self. And um, through that insight, you do gain both about your aspirations and about where you can have more peace and surrender in your life um, is going to be the energy moving forward going into next week. And then as a reminder on Sunday, that's when uh, Mercury squares Saturn and we do have that full moon. Uh, squaring Saturn in the T-square. So uh, just being patient, all of us on some level, remembering to be patient or take some responsibilities with, um, yeah, taking things slow. And it could be involving those areas I just mentioned, but likely what it's about in a more direct sense is that over the past year and a half, a lot of you have been putting a lot of hard work into maybe developing your resources. Maybe it's finances or investments for some of you, but most fundamentally internally your resources your sense of self-worth, your self-reliance, taking all this sort of seriously. And so as you are patient, knowing that things are unfolding in time with all these values of yours, I think can help you um, cultivate more ease and more constructive energy, which with what will be uh, this illuminating time at the end of the week. All right. So Libras, have a fantastic week. Thank you again for all of your likes, comments, and shares. If you would like a personal reading, there's a link down in the comment section for those. Uh, to see your personal chart uh, for the next year. But um, yeah, have a great one, and I will see you all next time.
Scorpion of Fucus, let's have a look at your weekly horoscope. So first things first, your ruler Mars has been in Pisces for a very long time now, about the past couple months. And this has been your fifth house of self-expression. So already a lot of emphasis when it comes to what you're probably right now, maybe rethinking or reconsidering involving the things you're passionate about or involving that self-expression of yours or anything that's close to your heart. Um, so with all this reconsideration, you guys are learning about a lot of this, but um, this is where Mercury and the Sun are going to shift into. So on Thursday, Mercury goes into your fifth, giving you more of a practical insight with your, with the, again, these passions or interests or having a bit of fun or entertainment in your life, whatever it is, uh, or anything that, again, that you've already been creating here. But uh, yeah, Mercury gives you the thought process, gives you the practical abilities. And so that's going to be adding to all of this energy. And then Friday and Saturday, the sun shifts into your fifth, giving you um, a lot of energy with it and, and quite literally self-expression because it is the sun's house. And uh, you could find that you are, I don't know, you've already been motivated here to express yourself in direct ways more than likely. But with the sun, you could just find you're gaining more energy through this or through hobbies, interests, or a bit of, again, that playful side to life. Or some of you creating through your business and work in fact since the sun does rule your 10th so that's the shifts this week um, and uh, at the beginning of the week we do have that conjunction though with the sun and mercury in your fourth so up until about this middle part of the week there is still a lot of emphasis on your home family or health whatever it is you've been focused on here probably for about the past few weeks so uh, Monday and Tuesday, you could find there's a lot of energy for this or there's, there's just a lot of um, passion or something or you're expressing yourself a lot, um, maybe at home with family, maybe you're, a lot of you are gaining some insights about this or insights about your health, in fact. So it is good to, again, find practical ways, whether it's through planning or whatever, um, to ground and structure your roots because everything is you know, still at the bottom of the chart for you. Um, you know, your vital life force energy is better focused right now, the first half on home, family and health. And then as you go through these coming months, you're going to find a lot more momentum and energy as these planets start to make their way to the top of the chart. All right. So, um, so that's the sun. That's the conjunction at the beginning of the week. And also this, this first half of the week, that conjunction will be sextiling up to Pluto. So on a minor note, there is this opening here for maybe some changes, facing some fears, maybe facing some fears about your sense of self-worth or your self-reliance, um, your, your inner resources, whatever this is, maybe financial material for some of you. It's not a harsh aspect. It's an easy one. I think you're willing to face the fears there, but it's just an opening to do so. So with whatever it is that you're facing involving your values, fears involving your values, um, you know, as you face them, as you accept them, you're doing the transformation work and that could bring some positive changes um, with again, these, um, personal things in your life and maybe even too with your career for some of you maybe your aspirations for some of you as well those are the those are the two key areas those planets rule now um, that's the first half and then like i said on thursday mercury goes into the fifth adding to the creative self-expression the sun goes in there friday and saturday right around that same time as we go into the weekend if you feel any wounds about it again chiron's already been helping you heal wounds about your self-expression so if you do feel that, again, the acceptance there can help rejuvenate and refresh you. And it's a neutral aspect. So I think naturally you will be willing to do that. I think it will happen naturally. So as you go through like Saturday, Sunday, probably feeling quite refreshed or rejuvenated about your self-expression, that could be facilitating, again, more of that passion to do so. So then Sunday is the full moon. It's the high point of the lunar cycle. There's momentum being built as we go through the week. Uh, this is going to be a full moon in your 10th house, which has already been emphasized. The last full moon was here, and your north node's here, suggesting that the life path of this year is about your career. Even though right now in the solar cycle, everything's down at the bottom, um, you know, more personal stuff. This uh, has been uh, bringing to the, you know, to the forefront a lot of, at the very least, insights about your career, your productive life, or the importance of achievement and success. And it is great for you to be putting energy into that. So more awareness about that. And then also the awareness about your aspirations. A lot of you are reconsidering, maybe rethinking your aspirations in life, your future hopes and wishes, that's Jupiter retrograde there. Some of you reconsidering um, groups or friends or your network circle stuff. 
and uh, that could be the insight. So with whatever the insights are on Sunday, involving your career or involving your aspirations or your networks, um, that energy is going to be facilitated for you moving forward, uh, both in the weekly sense, a couple of weeks, and then also in the next six months. Now, remembering too on Sunday that that full moon will be squaring Saturn, Mercury will be squaring Saturn, so all of us collectively are having to just sort of get reacclimated to the fact that things are taking time with maybe some of that stuff I just mentioned. But um, I don't think you're shying away from this. Saturn's already been in your first house this past year and a half. A lot of you have been assuming more responsibilities lately. And so just remembering that things are taking time with your personal needs and wants and your independence and these responsibilities just that day, you know, Sunday with it. And um, the more willing you are to take the slow and steady approach and to challenge yourself with that, uh, the better in healthy ways, of course. But that's all very constructive for you uh, moving forward. All right, so Scorpion and Fucus, have a fantastic week. Thank you again for all of your likes, comments, and shares. Uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to comment down below. If you would like a personal reading, uh, looking at your personal chart for the next year, uh, be sure to get in touch for that. There's a link down in the comment section also. But yeah, have a great one. Thank you again, and I'll see you all next time. All right, Sagittarius, let's have a look at your weekly horoscope. So first things first, just as a quick recap, you know, your ruler is retrograde in the 10th house. So a lot of you are still reconsidering things involving your career, your achievement and success in life, and that's good. It's supposed to be a time of reworking things generally, whether it's about that or just general things in your life about you, where you're going, where you're putting your energy. And it's kind of taking a step back and again, reworking can be excellent. Uh, at this time. Now coming into this week, we do have that conjunction with the Sun and Mercury in your third house, which has been emphasized already, um, involving learning or reading or writing, some of you business and trade. So whatever that's been, um, or if there's something new here, there's a lot of energy and passion Monday and Tuesday for these things, maybe to again, read or write or something, or to communicate even, there can be a lot of passion to do that. And your mind can be very um, energized with this in the third house. So whatever it is, again, like I was saying in the collective, just finding uh, healthy ways of implementing the, um, the ideas or the passions there through practical things like planning or whatever. And that can help you formulate the ideas, learn about things. In fact, I think you will be learning a lot about how your mind works, about communication, and again, exchanging business or trade if, if there has been something specific there for you. And uh, the middle part of the week, Tuesday through Thursday, that conjunction will be sextiling up to Pluto from your first house. Uh, as a reminder, there is this opening to make change. And you've been changing a lot over the past many years with Pluto in your first. But um, just a sort of minor opening here, Tuesday and Thursday. 
if you are feeling like there's something that uh, is a opportunity or opening to make some changes, to face some fears, uh, maybe with the uh, way you think or your perspective or with this day-to-day -day stuff uh, can be excellent. I think you can see some positive changes with that. Maybe some of you it's involving your career, um, your relationships, and or your adventurous spirit of life. Now on um, Thursday, that's when Mercury does go into your fourth house. So this is the new area where things are shifting. Mercury on Thursday, the Sun Friday and Saturday. And this has already been emphasized because you've got Venus and Mars here. Venus has been helping you perhaps reconsider this stuff. And this is the area of home. It's the area of family. It's also the area of your health. So it could be one of those things or multiple of those things. So it's now more energy here. You've already been motivated here, or at least that's a great outlet for your motivation is your, these uh, sentiments of yours and these, this personal life. Uh, but you're reworking it, rethinking all this. But Mercury here can help you get real practical with it. Your mind can be here um, and anything you do do involving or through your home, for example, or with your health. Um, yeah, there's a lot of productive energy, a lot of things you can even learn throughout the process. And this is going to be a strong emphasis still for about the next month and a half um, with the uh, roots in your life. So the sun going in there gives you a bit of vital life force Friday, Saturday going into next week. The next month and a half could be energizing you when you are doing things relating to uh, these roots in your life. Now at that same time, Friday, Saturday, Mercury does conjoin up to Chiron, so you may feel some wounds perhaps involving uh, this personal stuff or your past or your emotions or something like that. So as you do the acceptance and healing, you're going to find it rejuvenates you, it refreshes you, and then helps you continue to cultivate this area. I don't think it's going to be a harsh aspect. I think it's very neutral. But um, certainly very rejuvenating the more you are accepting those wounds or whatever comes up there. All right, so then uh, on the very end of the week, we do have that full moon, and that's going to be right on the cusp between your ninth house and your tenth house. So another full moon in your ninth, the last one was here too, about now more awareness about the importance of open mindedness, of your adventurous spirits. Some of you still cultivating things involving philosophy or spirituality or higher learning and travel and adventure for some of you. But uh, yeah, more insight about the importance of open-mindedness generally for all of you. And that open-mindedness uh, stuff, that worldview, that perspective there, certainly great energy to continue to cultivate moving forward. The other area is your career. Again, you are reflecting on all this and reconsidering some of this, you know, achievement and success stuff. But um, now you gain some awareness and, and some of you some, some uh, cultivations some high, some high point with some of this. <clears throat> if over the past six months you have been involved with something specifically involving your career or your achievement or your success, uh, this could be an illuminating time. Some things are working well, some things are not, but you can see what's working well and continue to put energy into that um, area moving forward. Then as a reminder, you know, the, all this uh, full moon and Mercury will be squaring up to Saturn. So patience, um, is the key for all of us, seeing the big picture, involving those key areas I just mentioned, but also the fact that Saturn's been in your 12th over the past year and a half has been helping you take seriously things like rest, meditation, surrender, let go, understand more about yourself psychologically. And so the more you are willing to you know, work on that, I suppose, and be patient with those things, uh, that's what Saturn's helping you do is sort of build this more receptive and spiritual and psychologically intuitive side to life. And with a willingness to do that, I think you'll find that it does make all this energy very constructive. All right, so Sagittarius, have a fantastic week. Thank you again for all of your likes, comments, and shares. If you'd like a personal reading looking at your personal chart for the next 12 months, be sure to get in touch for that. There's a link down in the comment section. But yeah, have a great one, and I will see you all next time.
All right, Capricorns, let's have a look at your weekly horoscope. So first things first, uh, just as a backdrop, you know, your ruler of Saturn is still in the 11th house, still a great time to be taking seriously your aspirations, building your aspirations, your hopes and wishes and all of this. Um, and even some of you too, your network circles. So continuing to take things slow with that. But um, this week we are approaching that full moon as we go through the week, some more awareness. And the week does end with it on Sunday, the full moon in your eighth house and your ninth house. So at the week's end, likely a lot of awareness about what matters most to you in life. Um, this has already been the case because the last full moon was here also, the lunar eclipse, helping you get open and vulnerable with life, understand more about yourself psychologically. So all of this sort of stripping away of fears and transformation and breaking of these cycles that you've been doing, these past cycles, um, it's been freeing you up. And so you're getting more insight, more awareness about this. And the other areas about the importance of adventure in your life and open-mindedness and some of you travel and philosophy and, and that kind of uh, expansion. But um, it's all reflective. Jupiter is still retrograde in your ninth house. A lot of you are reconsidering the whole life path and your worldviews and all this. But um, the full moon could certainly cultivate this. So if there has been something over the past six months involving higher learning, involving travel or anything abroad or open-mindedness, um, it is coming to the forefront and a high point with it. So at the very least, though, with whatever insight you do gain about the uh, your worldview and possibilities, um, as well as the deeper dimensions of life, that's some great insight that you can certainly uh, move forward going into next week. So as we um, go through the week, more awareness just generally and more momentum. But Coming into the week, we are in the first quarter phase, which does mean it's a good time, particularly Monday and Tuesday, sort of challenge ourselves um, to take things slow, but patiently and take some slow and steady steps, uh, particularly from those new beginnings from last week, as I was saying. But Monday and Tuesday, we have a conjunction with the sun and Mercury in your second house, again, emphasizing that there's been a lot of focus perhaps on your resources, uh, finances or investments for some of you. Um, others more internally and fundamentally all of you internally about your sense of self-reliance and the importance of that, your sense of self-worth, cultivating your natural gifts. But um, yeah, some insight, maybe some passion, something you're focused on or doing here with this whole resource area. And so it's great there. And I think, again, finding healthy ways of channeling that focus and energy can be fantastic. And um, with that, uh, there's insight that you could be learning about um, your inner and outer resources. Then Tuesday through Thursday, that conjunction sextiles up to Pluto, helping you uh, maybe make some changes with this area. Maybe you're feeling quite powerful, transformational, and maybe you're facing some fears, some deep psychological fears, maybe with Pluto in your 12th, because Pluto has been helping you transform your whole deeper psyche and your spirituality for many years, facing fears, basically. And, um, and that can be a very powerful force for you, again, to make some positive changes with um, some, of this, um, some of these resources or whatever it is you're focused on. Some of you, your routine, um, your work, some of you, your, um, your more expansive stuff in life about uh, opening your horizons to things, feeling transformed there. Then Thursday, Mercury does shift into your third. Um, so putting more emphasis on your third house. In fact, then the sun will go in here Friday and Saturday. So uh, there's already been emphasis here. This is the house of learning, of communication, of reading, writing, practical things, but also business and trade. So if there's been anything that you've been very motivated here in this area, or now since last week, starting to redo and rework, uh, this is an excellent area to now put your mental energy with Mercury going into next week. So uh, Thursday here, the shift, your mind's here, great for practical stuff, great for learning, especially it's, it's Mercury's house. So it gives you a good practical ability, rational faculty uh, when it comes to this stuff. And then on Friday and Saturday, the sun gives you vital life force and energy with all of this. So you could be finding you're gaining energy through reading more books or communicating or connecting with your community or talking with your sibling if you have siblings in your life. Um, anything that does involve uh, practical, mental, communicative, and uh, again, business or trade. Now, at that same time, Friday and Saturday, Mercury does go over Chiron here. So there might be some wounds that you've already been feeling 
perhaps involving this stuff. So just know that this is all internal. As you do the healing Friday and Saturday, it's rejuvenating you and refreshing you in this area. Um, on Sunday, Mercury uh, does square up to Saturn, and that's when we have that full moon that squares up to Saturn, your ruler. So with your ruler being squared by the full moon and Mercury, seeing it from your side, um, you know, it's about these new insights that you're gaining and just remembering that, of course, things are taking time with those aspirations of yours and with those future things. So being patient with it, just knowing that, of course, sometimes we do have to work extra patiently or extra responsibly and uh, the more willing you are to do that the better which again it's your ruler so i don't think it'll be too much of an issue and uh, the mercury side though maybe there are some things about communication or learning or some of this everyday practical stuff i was talking about that again maybe you can take a step back with or just be patient with and sort of build for the long term all right, so Capricorns, that is the week in a nutshell. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Thank you again for all of your likes, comments, and shares. Um, if you would like a personal reading, be sure to get in touch for those. There's a link down in the comment section. But um, yeah, have a great one, and I'll see you all next time. Aquarius. All right, let's have a look at your weekly horoscope. So as a backdrop, uh, your ruler Saturn is still in the 10th. And so um, in a bigger picture sense, it is still great to be taking the patient approach to things like your career or your productive life. And um, being patient is the key with Saturn, but also maybe assuming some responsibilities here, seeing the long road and cultivating all that for the um, distant future. Of course, um, you can see results along the way, but Saturn does bring things in time. So that's the um, that's the general backdrop, but this week we do have um, still a lot of emphasis in your first house. Happy birthday for those of you late Aquarians who are watching this for um, your sun signs, but all of you still have your sun in the first up until about Friday and Saturday, uh, which does emphasize still a lot of focus on yourself your personal needs and independence, and maybe even your goals as well. So a lot of vital life force and all this stuff concentrated on you, which is great. And Monday and Tuesday, you could be finding that there's a lot of passion or a lot of energy to maybe express yourself or communicate and be yourself, in fact, in your first house. Um, so whatever it is, like I was saying in the collective, healthy ways of communication and getting this passion or these ideas out, whether it's through speaking with someone or writing it down or planning or something like writing your intentions or your goals. Uh, but uh, yeah, as you ground it, you could be gaining certainly some insights about who you are, what you want, and these things that are unfolding for you. Now, Tuesday through Thursday, Mercury and the sun do sextile up to Pluto. And so there is this opening here for maybe if you are feeling like making some changes, um, again, with yourself and these personal wants of yours, uh, but uh, maybe facing some fears to do that, maybe facing some fears involving um, your aspirations, maybe facing some fears involving your groups or network circles, whatever that is. It's not a harsh aspect. It's just an opening for that. And um, I think you are willing to do that. So as you make some changes there, face some fears, whatever it is, you could find more positive energy there for your uh, personal needs, also for your relationships. Uh, the sun does rule your seventh, also for your self-expression as well. 
Then Thursday, that's when uh, Mercury leaves your sign, goes into your second house, uh, which is the house of your resources, inner and outer resources, inner resources such as cultivating your self-worth, um, outer resources such as your finances and your investments. So Mercury gives you a good practical mind here, an ability to work on all this uh, for the coming weeks. Uh, but you've already had Venus and Mars here. So Venus now retrograde, a lot of you are reconsidering, maybe rethinking some of this resource stuff, whatever it is. Um, that's good. And, but then you're still very motivated for this stuff. That's good too. But um, yeah, practical with Mercury. And then when we get to um, Friday and Saturday into the weekend, the sun shifts into the second. And this is where you're going to have a lot of vital life force for about the next month and a half um, involving all of this resourceful stuff finances, investments, your natural gifts, your natural abilities, cultivating your values in life. In fact, in two weeks, we're going to have a new moon here as well. So all this energy that's shifting into here is sort of laying the bedrock for what will be the new seeds um, being planted um, in a couple of weeks with these matters. All right. Now, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, yeah, we talked about that actually already. All right, so there's that. Uh, I do want to say, too, going into the weekend, Friday and Saturday, Mercury um, is going over Chiron. So you may feel some wounds, as maybe you have been the past six months, about your values or your resources, your sense of self-worth or finances or whatever. But this is all subjective. Know that you're very good here in this area. And um, Friday and Saturday, Mercury can help you do some healing with this. And so as you do the healing work there, that can revitalize you and refresh you um, when it comes to this um, resourceful stuff. So then the week ends with a full moon, and that's going to be a full moon right on the cusp between your seventh house of relationships, which has already been a high point because the last full moon lunar eclipse was here, and also your eighth house of everything deeper in life, which you are reconsidering and reworking on, openness, vulnerability. Some of you, um, th matters relating to interdependency. So whatever it is you're reflecting on there, though, there's, a, there's insight about both of these areas. Um, if there's been anything over the past six months that you have started or cultivated involving relationships, that could be coming to a forefront. But then, at, you know, again, but at the very least, it's just that you're gaining more insight and awareness about what you've been learning so much about already involving relationships. So more insight about that. And um, then now, too, how you can have that openness and vulnerability and all that, which, again, you've already been learning about with Jupiter, um, but uh, some insight there. Whatever insight you gain about this, uh, you can certainly utilize going into next week. Then as a reminder, uh, that full moon and Mercury will be squaring up to your ruler Saturn. So from your perspective here, again, I think it's about the patience there with the career, the productive stuff can help you cultivate this because um, there can be a bit of restriction or block um, and maybe with communication, uh, with Mercury for you or your mind, bringing extra attention to the mind, the communication, and taking things slowly too with all this resource stuff, whatever is unfolding there for you, just around this weekend, around Sunday with those squares. And then as a result, I think you'll see, as you have been seeing, that in this case, you can be continuously developing and constructively implementing the long road and the true enjoyment of your career and your productive life. And also, uh, in this sense, cultivating a bit of patience there with the relationships, with the vulnerability and shared resources, and then also with your personal resources and self-reliance. All right. So Aquarius, have a fantastic week. Thank you again for all of your likes, comments, and shares. Uh, if you would like a personal reading, looking at the year ahead, looking at your unique personal chart, uh, there's a link down in the comment section for that. But um, have a great one, and I'll see you all next time. All right, Pisces, let's have a look at your weekly horoscope. So as a backdrop, again, your ruler Jupiter is retrograde in your seventh house of relationships. So a lot of you are still reconsidering, rethinking 
all the potentials and possibilities with that or your perspective of relationships or whatever's been going on there. So uh, there's that, but generally with your ruler retrograde, uh, it's very good to just kind of take a back seat right now, rework some things, rethink some things in your life, uh, your personal needs and all of that. Now, um, in a more immediate sense, Monday and Tuesday, uh, we do have that conjunction with the Sun and Mercury. We have been in your 12th house. Now, mind you, this is where this week you're coming out of a lot of the uh, spiritual energies of all this behind the scenes stuff that you've been working on or getting the rest and relaxation or getting more in touch with yourself spiritually. Um, so coming into the week, though, Monday, Tuesday, you could be feeling quite energized here. Maybe there's a lot of insight about intuition, about meditation, like the importance of surrender, of letting go, of rest, and all of this stuff. And so Monday, Tuesday is excellent for this. Maybe doing that, those things, grounding it in practical ways, listening to your dream space, really getting in touch with yourself spiritually. And that's gonna, um, throughout the week, I think, re rejuvenate you because what you've got is you've got the sun and Mercury shifting into your sign. Um, starts on Thursday when Mercury does shift into your sign. So you will likely start to come out of what is a more muddled area with your mind. Um, and again, more nebulous and uncertain. I mean, you're already a very intuitive sign, so it's not a very big deal. But if there has been confusion or uncertainty or just, again, low energy with the mind and all this, that starts to go into a much more active area for you as we go through Thursday and onward. And so very good for communication, reading, writing, sharing, communicating, all that. Could even put more of an emphasis on relationships for you um, since Mercury rules your seventh and also even home and family or your health. More emphasis on that also and, and connecting emotionally. Then uh, Friday and Saturday, the sun does go into your first as well. So happy birthday for all of you early Pisceans out there watching this for your sun sign. But all of you do have now for the next roughly month and a half, a lot of vital life force and energy to cultivate your personal needs, your independence, your goals, and your overall life in general and everything that you want and everything that's important to you. So very good. Again, you've already had a lot of energy here. Mars has already been helping you be very direct and motivated with those personal needs. Um, you are reflecting on your personal needs and values at the moment with Venus retrograde, reflecting a lot about who you are, what you enjoy. But um, yeah, a lot of a lot of more energy coming into your sign, but in this sense, giving you more practical aptitude with Mercury and more vital life force energy, which is the sun coming out of, again, a more watery area, the 12th. All right, and um, the week does end. I do want to say too, actually, on that Friday and Saturday, Mercury does go over Chiron. So a lot of you may be doing some healing as you have been about the past six months when Chiron started to shift into you your sign. But now, um, you know, again, if you do feel any wounds or something about what you're capable of or what you're doing or your goals or whatever, no, this is all internal. And as you do that inner healing and acceptance, that can be very rejuvenating and refreshing. In fact, I think that'll naturally happen. And I don't think it's going to be too much of a harsh thing. It's actually a neutral uh, aspect or conjunction. So feeling refreshed as you do that acceptance, and then um, Sunday is the high point of this lunar cycle, which is awareness. And this is awareness of two key areas. One is the relationships. And that's going to be the Virgo side to it. Again, already emphasized. But um, if there's been anything specifically over the past six months, or uh, maybe even five months, because the next full moon will be here as well, that has been involving relationships, this could be a high point where at the very least you're gaining some insight about it. And the other area is with your work and routine, which already has been coming up to a high point because the last full moon lunar eclipse was here and that's where the north node is so life is already helping you go into this direction create some positive changes with your work your routine your health you know like your the, 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 the diet and the regimens side of your health uh, but anything you do on a daily level so again anything over the past six months involving your work could be coming to a high point as well so, um, so yeah, so that's the awareness, both of your daily life and of relationships and whatever insights you do gain over this weekend can be great to continue to move forward going into the coming weeks. Now, as a reminder, Mercury will be squaring up to Saturn and that full moon will be squaring up to Saturn at that time. As a reminder that things are taking time and, and collectively, it's important we have just a bit of patience and reserve um, when it comes to, in this case, whatever it is you are focused on with yourself and your personal wants and needs and with relationships and with uh, that work or daily stuff.
All right, and then as a result, yes, it's all being built, grounded for the long term there. All right, so Pisces, have a fantastic week. Thank you again for all of your likes, comments, and shares. If you would like a personal reading looking at the next 12 months for you, um, there's a link down in the comment section for that. But um, yeah, have a great one, and I will see you all next time. Take care.